It's my pleasure to kick off our next keynote. I'd like to introduce everyone to Margaret Anderson Kellier, uh, President and CEO of Minnesota High Tech Association. All right, thank you. All right, great. Thank you so much, everyone. I think it's probably good I get to speak after the break, but I'm not sure because a lot of you are, are still settling back in. I think that they're going to turn the music down maybe. Can everyone else hear the music? All right, there we go. Well, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for being here. I think this is just terrific. Thank you to Ryan and Rob for the invitation to present today. And uh, thank you to all of you for being here. I think I grew up personally near Mankato, so Minnesota State Mankato uh, was a very important institution in my family's life. And I know how important St. Cloud State is to so many people in this area. And it's so great to have so many people come today. So first of all, we're going to start just uh, very briefly. I'm going to talk a little bit about the investment landscape. Uh, talking about the history of what has happened in Minnesota and where we may be headed to into the future, a topic that's very important and near and dear to a lot of our hearts in terms of how we're going to keep growing here. So first of all, I just want to say Minnesota High Tech Association is a membership-based organization of both science and technology companies. We had our start and our origin story in the supercomputing industry, and we have grown to really have this focus of making Minnesota a top five science and technology state. And that takes into account jobs, entrepreneurship, the number of companies here, the startup companies in these sectors. And we really look at it with this idea that uh, educated workforce talent is so important. You've heard about that today already from so many people, including Mary Grove earlier today. Innovation and the innovation economy and what needs to happen to start companies, as well as entrepreneurship. And we do focus on public policy as well. We are an organization that gets involved in making sure that the conditions are right here in Minnesota to grow more companies. And that is important. And I'll talk a little bit about that at the end. But to jump right in, I do want to say that unfortunately today I will be taking off after my speech. I teach at the Humphrey School, which some of you saw. I teach on Monday nights. And so I need to go back to teach this evening at the Humphrey School. But my colleague Pat Dillon is here, if Pat would stand up. We are the home of SBIR Minnesota. And many of you know this program, but if you don't, it's really connecting federal resources to commercialized ideas and ideas that are commercial, that have commercial potential. It's a really great and fantastic program. And Pat is actually running uh, innovation hubs around the state now. And my colleague, John Dukic, who is here. Uh, John's right over here. And they will, I'm sure, when you're doing the networking break, uh, be available. So first of all, we're going to look at investment trends. And I know this is difficult to read, but I uh, will try to discern this for you very quickly. Um, you know, Minnesota has had a robust VC investment uh, portfolio over the years. Since 1995, Minnesota companies have raised more than $5.6 billion in venture capital. This is according to PwC Money Tree. The chart you see here shows the ebb and flow of this investing, and we can make this available to you afterwards, uh, and it is available on our website. The chart really illustrates that the investment, lending, uh, leading, uh, investment leading up to the dot-com boom and the bubble around 2000, and then the decline after that time, and then the stabilization of investment, and I think that is important to focus on. We're going to focus on uh, a couple of reports that we've done, and we have uh, some limited availability of those reports at our table today. And we have an updated version of this investment report on our website as well, mhta.org. But feel free to pick one up and, and also check out the updated figures. I'm going to wow you with these charts today, but I don't think it's, I'm, I'm going to try to break it down for you. Um, the, the three strongest sectors in Minnesota for investment have been healthcare, internet, and software. 
Those have been the three places where we have been able to really garner the most uh, venture capital. They account for 62% of our investments uh, over time. And I think that you know it, it goes uh, a little bit without saying, but I think to put a number on it, the healthcare sector has generated the most venture capital investment over time. Nearly 3.8 billion with an average of 8.4 million across 448 deals. The internet sector was the second most invested in with 1.6 billion and the average investment of 9.2 million across 171 deals. And then software, which in this category is non-internet or mobile, has drawn more than 775 million in this time period up to 2016 across 152 deals, with the average deal being 5.1 million. Since we're going to discuss these sectors today, and I know many of you have companies or investments in these sectors, it's important to look at the definitions. And so the healthcare sector is everything from medical care and wellness, drug development, distribution, often a long haul in terms of what happens for the companies who are in this sector, but not exclusively anymore with the advancement of medical technology. Internet and online applications, uh, but neither the hardware in which they run or the ISPs are the, the part that makes up our internet, our internet part of this. And then software, which is non-mobile and uh, non-internet based. This is important because what it shows you is that healthcare is very broad. And actually, I would argue, has gotten broader in the last 10 years in terms of the investment opportunity. This is tracking quarterly investments in Minnesota. And uh, the bands represent the recessions on this chart. And so we see kind of a natural fall off after the recessions in the investments. But you can also see that since 2010 and the resurgence out of 2010, we've had a little more stable uh, pattern of investing with some peaks in there with key uh, investments in, in particular. So I think that uh, the takeaway here is that at the peak of the bubble, Minnesota generated nearly $575 million in VC investments in the first quarter of 2000. And unlike the national VC trends, Minnesota has not had quite as good a recovery as other places. This is what one of our challenges, I think, is, is attracting and keeping investments here in Minnesota. This banded chart will show you that we can split the VC investments into two, uh, three big groups by timeline. The green group is, uh, this left-hand group is our 1995 to 2001, 2002 to 2008, 2009 to 2016. And we, what we've done in this chart is colored for you the uh, different areas that we we're talking about. So we, we see at the top there the healthcare and internet sector, software, mobile, consumer products going down into energy, utility, and uh, industrial at the bottom of this chart. During this time, there were five sectors that accounted for 91, almost 92% of the VC investments. And uh, following the Great Recession, two sectors, healthcare and internet, accounted for almost 75% of the VC investments. This, uh, the top five accounting for the 93% uh, are important to pay attention to as well. I'm going to pull this out a little more for you here. And this is where you can see the top nine sectors on the left healthcare, internet, uh, both software and computer hardware, media, traditional, mobile, which is a growing area, consumer products and services, and then electronics. And that was before, and then when you transfer over to the more recent period of time, 
you can see that healthcare nearly doubles in its investment in terms of what people are looking for to invest in VCs here in Minnesota and where our strength has been. Also, the internet generally, as well as energy and utilities, leisure and software. So there was a really kind of a collapsing after the dot-com period in Minnesota, and it provides us a roadmap for where these investments are going to. The key takeaways are that Minnesota's venture capital investments are becoming more condensed and concentrated over time. Fewer industries are sharing in the venture capital space here in Minnesota, but it also tells us where, um, when Mary Grove was speaking, she was talking about concentrations. And these concentrations are important to pay attention to in terms of what we want to attract into Minnesota and where our expertise is. There's also some emerging patterns that we can look to. I think energy and utilities and leisure are two of the areas that really tend to be on the rise in Minnesota. And it also fits with uh, where, where folks are focused on energy and utilities, on conservation, on production, as well as on leisure, just what people have uh, time to spend and how they're doing it. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of vibrancy in this and a lot of potential. There's also some things that need to be invested in. I, I heard you talk about your agricultural startup and how that sometimes ag can fit into our technology sector, but often it's its own category. And I think that this is an area where there's some opportunity for growth and investment in Minnesota. There's a lot of uh, great uh, startups out there that are ag-based, often using AI and other, other technologies to do their work, as, especially as farm production has gotten more pressurized. And I think we're going to see even more of that with the time period that we're in right now. There's also uh, a lot of things happening across the state in terms of the entrepreneurial community. You know, organizations like us, Greater MSP, Beta MN, Mini Demo, as well as the work that's being done across rural Minnesota, particularly in regional centers like St. Cloud, Mankato, Rochester, Duluth, the Fargo-Moorhead area. These areas provide a real, I think, entree for people to get, uh, get the assistance that they need as entrepreneurs, but also connect quickly with potential investors and be able to make, make that connection. We also see that there's more interest by our educational institutions. The University of Minnesota, I see a good representation from them here today, but St. Cloud State, Mankato, the work that's being done at University of Minnesota Duluth, this whole ecosystem is important to not only the entrepreneur, but it's actually important to the investor as well. I think the, the final piece, and maybe the piece that's a little more challenging right now, is the public policy side of things. We're in a time period of change in Minnesota. We have an open governor's race. We have a lot of changes coming in the legislature that we can see. And we have some outstanding issues. Tax reform was not done in the last legislative session. It uh, is unlikely to be quickly resolved in this coming legislative session just because of the time it takes to implement the policy changes. It takes the Department of Revenue in Minnesota about nine months to implement any law change. So the hope that the legislature will come together and a new governor will come together and do things like reinstate the angel investment tax credit, which right now does not exist anymore based on lack of action. These things are important places where we can come together as a community to advocate. The angel investment tax credit has had a significant effect on uh, a number of companies in Minnesota, and I think it is important to think about how we reinstate that and come together as a community to work on this issue. Um, alone, uh, in 2017 alone, 101 startups used the angel investment 
uh, credit. How many are in the room who have used the angel investment credit in the past? So a good number. And I think it's important that we work on this. Uh, the credit disappeared at the end of 2017 and was not renewed for 2018. So this is an important public policy consideration. I think it's also important to say, um, some of you may be aware that I had an experience this summer, I call it my, uh, my summer adventure. I actually did run for Congress in the 5th Congressional District. And I will just tell you that people do not talk about our issues. People do not engage on our issues of business, of investment, of startup, of the ecosystem. And I think it's one of the things we all have uh, more work to be done on, which is educating people who are running for office about what it takes to start a company, to grow a company, to exit a company, and then have the virtuous cycle continue with things like what Rob and Ryan are doing with Great North Labs. So this is, I think, a key point that we need to get out of our comfort zone a bit here and be willing to educate folks uh, who aren't in our space on how to do this. I do want to invite all of you to our Minnesota Venture Conference, which we'll be holding the day after the election. We hope a few folks who are newly elected will come that day. But we really are focused on featuring great companies that are in a more focused technology space. We've invited, I believe, about 20 companies, including five companies from out of state right now, to participate. And there is information back at our table. I appreciate what all of you do as both investors, entrepreneurs, and people who want to have their own uh, entrepreneurial experience. I hope you'll reach out to us so that we can partner together. We're located right across from Fueled Collective, uh, which was known as COCO in the Grain Exchange, and we're happy to work and partner with all of you. I love the idea that we move beyond community into a movement of what we need to be doing across the state. So thanks so much, and we'll make uh, everything available to you.